Hey, welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to install Windows 11 on a computer that does not support it from a hardware perspective. Now, if you want to see the written version of this video, you can find a link to my website in the video description. And I just want to quickly give you a quick shot of, you know, I am running PC Health Checker. And as you can see, I'm not qualified to run Windows 11. Ironically, as I move Windows around, I'm showing that I am running Windows 11, in fact. So despite, you know, there being a conflict of information, my computer doesn't care. It's like, hey, I'm running Windows 11. I'm fine. So what is the concern here? So Windows 10 is going end of life October 14th, 2025. It's not going to just die. Your computer's not going to stop working. I explained that in a separate video. What does the end of life actually mean? And how do you actually achieve Windows 11 compatibility? What are the hardware requirements? I have a link to that video in the video description. Um, and so a lot of people are gonna need to know, like, how do I jump to Windows 11? Because the problem here is like a lot of computers, which work great, like my computer back over there, it's a gaming PC I built 10 years ago for $3,000. It still does pretty good for a lot of games, especially indie games. It's great for editing 4K videos and day-to-day -day usage, you get the idea. A lot of people are stuck with this. So you have options like installing Linux, which is great, which I've done. I dual boot into Windows 11 into there as well. Um, but then, you know, how do you get it past the requirements, which is TPM 2.0? So TPM 2.0 is a harsh requirement because a lot of um, processors and motherboards don't support that. But let's say you do, let's say you, you do have TPM 2.0 compatibility, what a lot of tech news websites, YouTubers, and even Microsoft themselves don't really mention too often, which is a shame, is that your processor, if it's too old, won't support Windows 11 either. So I have a Intel fourth gen processor, i7, but it needs to be, I think, believe eighth gen minimum, okay? I don't qualify, but I have Windows 11 working on it just fine. And that's what we're gonna do in this video. So uh, well, we're gonna get ready for some preliminary steps before we start the process. First and foremost, back up the data on your computer, okay? We're going to fully wipe the computer. Usually when you're installing Windows, you have the option to retain your data and then do an in-place upgrade of the operating system. I don't recommend this, especially with the methodology we're gonna use. We're gonna bypass Microsoft security. We're not gonna hack or tinker. You don't have to be tech savvy to do this. This is super, super easy. Um, but yeah, that is something to be wary of. Also, if you have multiple drives connected into your computer like I did, I have three drives. So it's best to disconnect those because when you're going through the Windows installation process, it'll show you all the disk drives connected. The last thing you wanna do is click on the wrong one because a lot of people think, oh, the, the drive with my operating system is gonna be disk zero. They're, they're called disk zero, disk one, disk two, three, four, you get the idea. The problem is depending on how the computer is built, even if it's built by like Lenovo or HP, the person building it, it depends some motherboards, it depends on the motherboard, it's kind of funky. If you take the drive with Windows and you put it into disk slot three, it's actually disk three. And your storage drive could be in disk zero. So when you go to Windows and install it, you might hit delete on disk zero, you've actually deleted your storage drive, not the operating system drive. So something to be very cautious about. I actually just opened the side panel on my desktop, physically disconnected the cable. When Windows is installed, I disconnected it back and I'm good to go. This way ensures I lose none of my precious data. Uh, next thing, do not buy a Windows 11 license key after you watch this video thinking, oh, it's gonna work, I'm gonna spend my money. No, we, we wanna take the off chance this might not work for you. You're gonna end up buying a Windows 11 license, which I don't think you can refund. I don't think anyone accepts it back and you're stuck. Install Windows first and there's an option to say, I don't have the license key, you can put it after. So let's make sure it works first, then spend your hard-earned money. The last thing you need is a USB stick to put Windows installation files on, the Windows 11. But before anything else, you wanna check, does your computer even meet the requirements for installing Windows 11 or not? Like, are you wasting your time on this video and you can install Windows 11 right now with the official Microsoft method? So you wanna to go to your search engine of choice. I use StartPage. It's based on Google's search algorithm, but I cannot log in. It's like a private based. They can't track me and use my data for ads. Uh, I'm just gonna type in something like PC health check. The first result should be a Microsoft based page after the sponsors and ads, of course. You're gonna download this tool. It's it's super fast to download and install, run it, and it will tell you, yeah, you do or do not meet the requirements. If you meet the requirements, just install Windows 11. You should get prompted by Windows 10 if you're running it to upgrade anyway. So you're, you're good to go. Assuming you're like me and your computer over there, like I have, doesn't meet Windows 11 requirements, we're gonna continue on. The next thing you wanna get is Windows 11. After, after searching for it, you want to scroll down a little bit to this Microsoft page. You want to ignore everything that you see initially because you want to just get the disk ISO image. 
the, the first two things, what it basically does is prompt you to plug in your USB stick and Microsoft's tool will, will put Windows on here, the installation files ready for you automatically. That negates the entire thing we're gonna do in this video, like absolutely everything. So do not do that. You wanna download the disk image locally onto your computer and just let that kind of sit there to the side. The next thing you wanna do is download something called Rufus. Now, if you have your doubts about downloading this software, you know, listening to me, you should. You should absolutely doubt everything you hear on the internet when it comes to installing and downloading software, including my videos. I highly encourage you to be safe. So if you have any doubts about this, research it. It's a very safe tool, especially on Reddit forums. It's what most people use to get uh, installation files ready for installing Windows, installing uh, Linux. It's just the most popular one. This is the most pivotal tool in this entire video. Download it and we got all our files collected. Okay, I have my primary files collected, which is just Windows 11 and Rufus. I'm gonna plug in my USB stick. Uh, oh, also one more note, whatever you have on USB stick will be white, 100%. So if you have anything precious on there, please download it and uh, copy it over right now. Um, and we're gonna open up Rufus. We get a prompt saying, hey, do you trust the software? Just say yes. And it's super bare bones. You have your uh, drive at the top. This is my USB stick, it's a 32 gig USB stick. We're gonna ignore this right here and we're gonna click select. Don't hit the drop down because it has options. You wanna actually click select and then we're gonna navigate to where's the actual Windows 11 ISO file that you just downloaded from Microsoft site and double click that. Then you have a whole bunch of things happening here. Now here's the most tricky part about this is trying to understand which type of setup does your BIOS have on your computer. This is the only true technical hard part to figure out. It might require some tinkering and playing around with. Hey, quick pause in the middle of this video. I do have to take time to do this research and make this video. So maybe you want to consider subscribing to my channel. It literally helps my channel grow. Not only that, maybe you want to consider hitting the super thanks button just below the video window uh, to donate because I have to do this on my own time. Um, you don't have to, of course, you're not obligated to, but it certainly does help me. With that said, let's continue on with the rest of the video. Typically when I have uh, Windows 11 set up for GPT, it's a it's a newer format, it allows for bigger drives, GPT is what you want. And then you'll see it defaults to UEFI. Most computers, including my 10 year old PC, supports UEFI just fine. So most people are not gonna have a problem here. However, what I noticed on my computer, this is many years ago, many, many years ago on the same desktop I installed it on, is that it wasn't set up for uh, UEFI. It was set up on a legacy system so I had to change that myself. So how do you do that? To, to boot into your BIOS is different for every computer. For my uh, Asus motherboard over there on my gaming computer, I think you just hammer delete. On this Lenovo laptop, I have to hammer, I think it's F12 or F2, something like that. Dell computers, I think it's like F11. And, and they vary by make and model too. So you kind of have to experiment. If you're not sure, read the manual that came with your computer. If you don't have the manual, just ask in forums, like, hey, what are the most popular buttons to press? It's usually be between F1 to F12 or the delete key. So when your computer is booting up, just kind of hammer all of them. If it doesn't work, then reboot and try again. Some people are intimidated with adjusting the BIOS. Easier method is to leave everything as it is. And when you find options that you need to adjust, like maybe booting from legacy mode to UEFI, uh, is to take a picture of what the settings are right now. Just take your cell phone, take a picture of the screen, and you'll you'll have that in memory. Change the settings in your BIOS, and then if something breaks during this installation process we're gonna do, at least you have pictures taken of what you changed. So just go back into your BIOS and change it back to normal and experiment and try the next option, the next option. Typically the options you're looking for are usually in one of two areas. Um, most motherboards, the BIOS settings are different. There's thousands of configurations that can tell you what to do exactly, but basically you want to look in two particular sections of your BIOS menu. It could be one of these two sections, usually, usually. One is called boot. Boot literally means the, the booting sequence and uh, how does it actually boot in, into the operating system it's going to use. That's where you might find UEFI settings. The other one could be in security. Um, some other more fanny manufacturers think, well, this is a security feature, so we should put under security and not boot. So look in one of those two settings, take pictures. If anything breaks, it's okay. Just revert back. Just look at your pictures, how it was before. Going back, um, volume label, we don't care about. I don't care what gibberish or junk it puts in there. Uh, again, and file system, we're going to leave it as default. We're going to leave cluster side. We're not going to touch anything basically here. But what happens is when you hit start, it'll give you a prompt saying, hey, we're going to adjust some stuff for you. Do you want to do this? Yes or no. It's completely optional. It recognizes that we're trying to load a Windows 11 uh, ISO image. This is the most important check mark out of everything. Remove requirements for four gigabytes of RAM, which almost every computer will achieve. 
remove the requirement for secure boot and TPM 2.0. So despite my computer being 10 years old, it doesn't have TPM 2.0. Uh, it doesn't have a supported Intel chip, which you see, it has no it has no inkling about, hey, your processor is too old. Can you skip and bypass that? It will do that anyway, at least in my experience. There's a whole bunch of other cool options here, like remove the requirement for a Microsoft account. I, I choose to do that and create a local account instead. You can name it like something like admin or your name, John Doe, whatever, Jane Smith. Um, and you can have all these other stuff here, okay? Whether you want to or not, it's completely optional. Hit OK. It'll then flash the, um, or in install, to, to, to in layman's terms, install the relevant files and these settings on the USB stick. And then you're going to take the USB stick, eject it when it's done, plug it into the computer, and boot into that USB stick. How do you do that? Again, it varies by computer. Um, on my uh, PC gaming machine, I have to boot into the BIOS. I hammer del, uh, delete, not del. I hammer the delete button, and then it has an option saying, hey, hit F, I think it's F10, to boot into whatever option. And then I see the USB stick. So I'm gonna jump over to my desktop computer right now and show you what the process is like on my computer, which will be slightly different for you, but yeah, we'll go through the installation process. Okay, so I'm gonna boot up my computer. I have the USB stick plugged in. I'm gonna hammer delete on my computer, and there it gives me the option to say, hey, what, what do you wanna do for your boot sequence? And I see the USB stick, I'm gonna select that um, and that's it what it's gonna do is boot into the USB stick itself and try to start loading the Windows 11 installation files this will appear everything as normal there's nothing special happening here there's no hacking or anything like that uh, Rufus has done all the work for us when we did those check marks that I showed you earlier and that's it we're gonna install Windows like a regular system now when it comes to the part of asking for license key, you can just ignore this part. We can do this after. We wanna verify that it even installs and works on your computer. And when it does, then of course you can purchase a Windows 11 license after and activate that afterwards, super easy. I think when Windows 11 boots up, you just hit the start, the Windows start menu, type in about, and then there you'll get prompted with about PC and there you can uh, put in your license details. Now during the installation process, some people what they'll do is they have these commands that'll open up uh, command prompt or PowerShell during the installation process. It's like these special buttons you can press on the keyboard to de-bloat Windows 11. Here's a problem with this. In a lot of cases, they work. In some cases, Microsoft eventually kind of uh, bypasses and they no longer work. However, even if they work, I've tried this myself and experimented, it does break some functionality. The clock doesn't work properly. And when the clock doesn't work properly, some apps specifically say we're not gonna run because the clock syncing is not working. Another thing I noticed is an easy bypass is during the regional selection, there's one called, I can't remember what it was, it's called World. It's either World English or English World, one or the other. What it basically does is it doesn't install a whole bunch of bloat, like all these weird, like a candy crusher and all that stuff. It sounds fantastic. The problem is it breaks the clock in the Windows 11 settings. And a lot of apps I tried to install and run just don't work. Most of them do, some of them don't, and some of them I absolutely need. So. I had to then change the settings in the clock and put in my region, which is Eastern time zone in Toronto. But then all that stuff comes back then, the, the bloat, if you will, with the candy crush and all that garbage. So try that if you want to during the installation process, but just expect it might be some kinks and bugs, but you can always just adjust, adjust the uh, time zone settings and it'll fix the problem for you. That's pretty much it. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be checking my social links and website link in the video description. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.